Hello, everybody. We're going to hit you up with another presidential election. This one, the election of 1820. The era of good feelings is in full swing. James Monroe going to go for the second term. Can he get it done? Let's find that out right now. Now, the Democratic Republicans are basically the only party left in the United States. The Federalists have gone the way of the dodo bird, so the Democratic Republicans are pretty much left as the only party running the show. They are running the show at this point. And since James Monroe of Virginia's renomination as president was never in doubt, um, few, Republican, few Democratic Republicans bother to even show up to the nominating caucus. Only 40 delegates would attend and the caucus would decline to make an official nomination. So essentially President Monroe and Vice President Tompkins were de facto candidates for president and vice president. Um, Richard Mitchell Johnson, remember that name because it's going to come up in a later video. Um, offer the following resolution which said it is inexpedient at this time to proceed to the nomination of persons for the offices of president and vice president of the United States. Um, this, resolu this resolution was eminently adopted and the meeting was adjourned. Now, um, we were in a period, now since there was no serious opposition to Monroe and Tompkins, um, Monroe basically ran out of post. There was really no campaign. But even though the United States is going through this period of euphoria, so to speak, this period of one party politics called the era of good feelings, there was a couple of serious issues um, to deal with during Monroe's second term. Um, the first one coming up in 1819 when the first major economic depression hit the United States, the Panic of 1819, and the other was an issue over slavery, and that was concerning Missouri's admission into the Union. Now, there was a balance of power between free states and slave states, and if Missouri were to get admitted into the Union as either a free state or a slave state, that balance would be undermined. Um, that balance would be undermined and possibly sectional tensions could be opened up. So to prevent this can of worms from being opened yet, and we would see later on down the road that slavery would become a big problem in the United States and would lead to the Civil War, but that's down the road, way down the road. Anyway, to prevent this can of worms from being opened, the Missouri Compromise was passed. Um, the Missouri Compromise admitted Missouri into the Union as a slave state, and it carved Maine out of Massachusetts before this compromise, Maine having a part of Massachusetts. Um, nevertheless, Maine was admitted to the Union as a free state, and slavery would be banned from a line above the 3630 parallel. So anything north of the 3630 parallel, um, you cannot have slavery. The obvious exception is Missouri. So any new state admitted to the Union above that line had to be free. Any state admitted to admitted south of the line didn't necessarily have to be a, didn't necessarily have to be a slave state but they could have slavery there if they wanted. Now, speaking of Missouri, there is a dispute over the electoral votes of Missouri before we get to the results here. On the 9th of March, 1820, Congress had passed a law directing Missouri to hold a convention to form a constitution and a state government. This law stated that the said state, when formed, shall be admitted into the Union upon an equal footing with the original states in all respects whatsoever. Of course, Missouri, as part of the Missouri Compromise, was admitted to the Union as a slave state. Um, however, when Congress reconvened in November 1820, the admission of Missouri became an issue of contention. 
and proponents claimed that Missouri had fulfilled the conditions of the law and therefore was a state. The tractors contended that certain provisions of the Missouri Constitution violated the United States Constitution. And by the time Congress was due to meet to count the electoral votes from the election, this dispute had lasted over two months. The counting raised a ticklish problem. If Congress counted Missouri's votes, that would count as recognition that Missouri was a state. On the other hand, if Congress failed to do this, uh, Missouri would not be recognized as a state. I'm knowing ahead of time that Monroe had won a landslide and that Missouri's vote really wouldn't matter. Um, the Senate passed a resolution on February 13, 1821, stating that if a protest were made, there would be no consideration of the matter unless the vote in Missouri would change who would become president. Instead, the president of the Senate, who was the vice president of the United States, so in this case, Daniel D. Tompkins, um, would announce the final tally twice, once with Missouri included and once with it excluded. Um, the next day, this resolution was introduced into the full House. After a lively debate, it was passed. Nonetheless, during the counting of the electoral votes on February 14, 1821, an objection was raised to the votes of Missouri by Representative Arthur Livermore of New Hampshire. He argued that since Missouri had not yet officially become a state, they had no right to cast any electoral votes by the way Missouri would become a state on August 10, 1821. But immediately, um, Representative John Floyd of Virginia argued that Missouri's votes must be counted. Chaos ensued and order was restored only with the counting of the vote as per the resolution and then adjournment for the day. Um, speaking of results, let's get to them. Mm -hmm. Monroe is easily going to win this election. He's going to easily win re-election to a second term. He wins every single electoral vote in the Electoral College but one. William Plumer, a New Hampshire elector, ended up going faithless. If you're a faithless elector, that means you go against the will of your state. And he votes for the Secretary of State. John Quincy Adams, the son of John Adams. Now, a lot of people think that Plumer did this. Um, historians have, some historians have thought that Plumer did this to prevent Monroe from becoming the second president to ever be elected unanimously by the Electoral College. He wanted that honor to only remain with Washington, and it still does today. But in fact, this was not his goal. Um, Plumer simply thought that Monroe was a mediocre president and that Adams would be a better one. Um, Plumer also refused to vote for Tompkins for vice president as he called him grossly intemperate, not having the, that weight of character which his office requires, and because he grossly neglected his duty in his only official role as president of the Senate by being absent nearly three-fourths of the time. Um, Plumer instead voted for Richard Rush. Um, the Electoral College results were released twice, one counting the votes of Missouri, the other one not counting the votes of Missouri. But it really doesn't matter. Monroe is easily going to win re-election without any opposition. Um, the Federalists put up a few serious vice presidential candidates, but they couldn't do much better than that, really. Uh, Monroe wins 80.6% of the popular votes, but the Democratic Republicans, they're eventually going to go the way of the dodo bird, and they're going to fragment, and this sets the stage for the cray-cray election of 1824. That election we'll talk about next time. Um, I hope you get a lot out of this video. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos, go ahead and watch those if you want. And with that, we will see you next time.